on March the 9th, 2020, I submitted a ticket to League of Legends support team, not appealing a ban or a suspension. Though, to be honest, that was kinda common for me back then. But to suggest changes to the matchmaking system. Yeah, big balls. We both know that's impossible. Don't care. The support team allegedly forwarded the ticket to the team dedicated to digest it properly. Though no responses were ever seen from them, I truly hope it got reached and considered at least. That's why now I'm gonna reorchestrate what's been discussed so everyone could give their thoughts about it, instead of leaving it unknown and alone in the dark. And for the sake of easiness as well. To begin with, two things can be first thought of when considering changes to make the game better, either to improve or to solve an issue. This change is more of a solving an issue than improving something in the game. This change doesn't even address the matchmaking system as a whole, but just a small tiny part of it, yet it has a huge role in influencing and determining almost everything. First, what's the issue? Well, problems create solutions. I made that ticket after I seriously wondered what's the change that would make the ranked experience better, at least if I could speak for myself. To help trace it back efficiently, I asked myself, where's my fun in ranked? Intriguing. And what's ruining it? Yes, always having good players, both in your team and in the enemy team, is a wonderful thing to have to get the fullest out of league, more consistent, tense, and sweaty games. Yet, that most likely will never be assured by a matchmaking system, even if it could match the vast majority of your games with and against equally skilled players, it doesn't mean that all of those games would be enjoyable. Your allies could still perform poorly. Equally skilled players facing each other doesn't necessarily mean the losing team would be slightly behind. Gaps and diffs can still happen. Esport games are just one living example of it, which kinda directed me more and more to the problem itself. If it isn't avoidable, then what's avoidable? What's the thing that we could actually have control of, get our hands on, that could make ranked less of a misery? After some end Endless self genjutsu. I used myself as an example, a vessel, constantly reflecting what's my most fun in rank versus my worst. A realization crossed my mind. I knew that if I played the game and performed like horseshit and lost, it wouldn't feel as bad as playing near perfection yet not securing the win due to having feeders or trollers in my team. So it's about the competitiveness. If I played like dog shit and lost, I would blame myself. But if I played super good yet lost due to the horrible performance of my teammates, it would sting harder, and I would blame my team for it. But to morally evaluate this, the blame should be on the system. Why? Yes, true, there are always things you could have done better or differently in the game that could have changed its unfortunate outcome. But that doesn't change the fact that you're still 16 to 1 4 with better farm, XP, objective taken, vision control, riz, everything. And your apes are 1 and 13 at best, sucking at every measurable stat. So, from a logical perspective, there's indeed an undeniable difference between the two. If someone does an effort to perform good, yet they couldn't make it to the win, compared to someone who barely did a recognizable and measurable performance, it would be only considered unfair if we punish them equally. Yes, some of you might guess it already, it's about the punishing process, the LP. That's what we have control of. Some already mentioned suggestions that target how the LP is treated, yet none of them aligns with my solution accurately. It's a heated and hated solution by the way, if you're not familiar with these debates. But don't worry, we're gonna detail this recommended change, point out the problems it solves, its advantages, discuss its impact on the ladder, and criticize it objectively. Plus, funny how Riot is considering replacing next season the current matchmaking system with a new skill estimation system called True Skill 2, which takes into consideration the performance and not just wins and losses. Glad they finally started to open their eyes, eh? Don't know about the haters of this solution though. Speaking about wins and losses, let's dig deep into it. If you play a ranked game now and perform good, unlike your team, and you unfortunately lose, the system will punish you with minus 25 LP. If you play another ranked game, which you also manage to perform good in it, unlike your team obviously, because why the fuck would they? The system will also punish you with minus 25 LP again. If you play another ranked game, and you perform like you never did before, being one of the reasons that helped and kept the team from losing, one of the pillars that held as much as possible, until everything collapsed, all that sheer amount of effort gets thrown away, ignored by the famous minus 25 LP stamp. Now, to explain the concept, the matchmaking system will stay the same. The only, and the only difference is, if you lose a game after performing good, 
unlike your team, it would interfere to mitigate some LP loss. Just the same when you have an AFK in your team, which makes sense. Having an AFK drastically increases the chances of losing, so the system will be more tolerant and understanding of the circumstance. The same way it should be when noticing performance varieties. If you're having brain dead lunatics running it down, the system should take a fucking stand and do something about it. So far the excuses are, oh the matchmaking system can be perfect, meaning that it can match everyone with a precise skill level, or it can control how each one plays even if their MMR matches, or they can punish someone based on their performance, cause it's hard to really dictate what really happened in the game. Well, yes you fucking dummy, we know. All you have to do is reward the effort by punishing less on lost games only. If you win a game, regardless whether you carried or got carried, it would be still the same. No interferences from the system. When the system interferes, aka on lost games, we have metrics and stats that help determine how much LP should be mitigated. Otherwise, what's the purpose of telling us, oh hey buddy, wonderful performance, here's your S+. Plus. But fuck you as well. Minus 28 LP, bitch. Shouldn't have lost. Oh wow, you managed to perform good the next game. Damn, we thought the first one was just pure luck. Minus 27 LP still though. Oh, would you look at that. You managed to perform good again. Damn, that's some consistency right there. Oh, and a big fat whoop in minus 30 LP. I can't emphasize enough on how ridiculous this is. Some might say, oh, no, uh, it's a team game. Uh, it's a loss for everyone. Nah, bro. I'm pretty fucking sure if you perform way better than your trash team, the coach won't go hard on you as much as the others who inted, whether it was deliberate or not. Sure, it doesn't change the fact that it's still a loss, but the performance is still acknowledged. So for example, those three games I mentioned, instead of losing minus 25 LP, depending on the performance of each game, you would lose, let's say, minus 21 LP instead, maybe 19 LP. You see, this way, a player would feel less bad when losing such games, knowing that the system is there to interfere to punish them fairly, while the mutants are the only ones who deserve the minus 25 LP treatment. Cause this is the trick about ranked. 3 games is what? Roughly 2 hours if each game was like 30 minutes, considering the average queue times, lobby dodges, potato PCs taking ages in the loading screen, maybe even remakes. Losing all of those 3 games while performing how you should to win the LP is detrimental if your efforts weren't paid off at all. At best, what you receive from Riot is, after sarcastically asking you if you want to honor one of those atrocious players, they tell you, congratulations summoner, you successfully killed 5 enemy wards, here's 20 tokens that you can go ahead and forge them to win some exclusive content. No. You see, Riot doesn't care, as simple as that, if they don't appreciate a player's time and skill more in depth rather than at a surface level, it would be detrimental for themselves as well. How is that? Well, Riot wants players to play as much as they can, so tell me, which player would be more hesitant to play their 4th ranked game? The one who lost 75 LP total? Or the one who the system interfered to mitigate some LP for them based on their performance, making them lose only 60 LP instead? The answer is quite obvious. Isn't it Riot's arguable biggest concern is to assure that the player is always willing to play more? Plus, not many would be willing to invest more money on buying all sort of loots on a game that they play less, right? I would feel more willing to play if the system had that change, don't know about you though. And by the way, Riot can add as much metrics as they deem necessary, at least that would make players pay more attention to the stats and try to maximize them, which can increase the skill level overall. Most of them post game they just check the KDA, farm, gold, damage, maybe a few other stats like damage to towers, healing or shielding, vision score etc etc. Now. One of the biggest arguments against this change is that people will start to play for the KDA in a greedy, selfish way, destroying teamwork. Now, let's lay down stuff first. The system doesn't reward you any differently than how the current matchmaking system rewards you when winning. So performing like crap or having over 30 kills won't matter at all if you won. And if you say, oh no, we know, but uh, that's what's gonna lead to losing anyways. Talking about, you know, that self-performance assuring style. Well. Really? Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm certain. Huh. So trying to tell me that you never wished when you were getting shit on that one of your teammates would pop off, being the MC, killing every opponent on site. You never did. Oh, that's kinda ironic. If we were getting shit on and someone asks us in the chat whether they can activate the John Wick mode, the Kratos mode, 
realistically, no one would be like, oh no, don't you even dare doing so, you selfish, greedy bastard. No, like, please, bro, yes, Penta killed them. Ace them all by yourself. Take everything. Carry us, please. Give us that juicy free LP. Fuck it. I'll even honor you after the game. I want to have more players like you in my games. Oh no, that's not the ball we are trying to make. Uh. I know, I know, I know. I'm just simplifying things one at a time. When we spawn on the rift, deep down, what do we hope for? Like, guys, please, just play it safe. Don't do risky plays. Just scale. Don't feed. It's fine. I don't want you to carry. I have confidence in myself in doing so. I'll take the charge. I'll take the lead. Trust me. Sure, I would love if someone else could carry with me, being another wing con. Winning condition, by the way, if you're not familiar with the term. But most importantly, just don't feel. If you can try your hardest to remain even, at the very least. We all hope that now, when the game starts, before things go down the rail. Well, I mean, unless you hope each game that someone gonna carry your noob ass. But like for real, that's legit what we would hope for. But, let's say we have two mid laners. After 15 minutes, one of them is 1 in 10. Horrible performance, and the other mid laner is 17 and 2, taking everything they put their eyes on. From plates, to farm, to camps, to kills, your crush, everything. Which one you would like to have in your team? The greedy fat assassin, or their opponent that got shit on? Well, you can shove that teamwork spirit up your ass, full homo. Hold up! Wait a minute! I will take that greedy admirable summoner any time of the day. Plus, it's not like this system could get exploited so players could generate more LP for them. Cause again, if you win, then nothing changes. No one cares about the performance if you won. But if you lose, it will actually be beneficial to the state of the game. How so, you may ask? Let me elaborate for you. If two players play 10 games each, and they both win half of them, but the first player consistently performs good even in the games lost, while the second one performs only good in the games won, and horrendously in the games lost. For the sake of illustrating, we're gonna make the LP gains and losses stable, which is 25 LP, and the LP loss mitigation as 5 LP. The first player will end up slightly higher in the ladder compared to the second one who remained in their place, which makes sense, because they managed to still perform good in those lost games. That's admirable, which means they do indeed belong higher in the ladder compared to the second one and not lower someone who performs consistently good regardless on one or lost games mean they are better than someone who only performs good on one games and trash on lost games does it ring a bell smurfs the everlasting matter that the community whines about they are more likely to perform consistently good regardless the outcome of the game this system will make them lose less lp on such games helping them reach their respected elo faster why would you consider a smurf to lose the same amount of lp in an elo that is supposed to be considered lower than their skill level a normal thing don't you agree that smurfs should reach their elo faster and minimize their occurrence on skill levels lower than theirs to make the experience enjoyable for beginners don't you have to agree on this one those smurfs or anyone who belong higher by the way doesn't have to be a smurf let's say for example someone got themselves some fancy coaching going on and such and let's say they improved quite a bit on a scale of games with the help of the system they would reach their skill bracket faster and eventually by facing supposedly equally skilled players they won't let you get away with losing games while mostly performing good no at best slightly even perhaps even shit on clapped because that's their elo that's their skill level that's what's supposed to happen they will give them hard times which means they will stop receiving the system's mercy as i would like to call it the moment they start to reach their skill level because you will have to be significantly noticed from your team when losses occur if everyone's performance was relatively the same the system has no reason to interfere you can't be like oh why the system didn't mitigate at least some two or three lp from the loss no you gotta pop off to earn it remember being a super carry and losing because of your team is what hurts most that's why this system add-up is suggested in the first place to prevent such cruelty and show some tolerance recognition and understanding that's a simpler way by the way to check whether you belong higher in the ladder or not whether you are consistently performing good if you are performing just like everyone else then there won't be something to be looked at and that's a very important point you see, right back in the day, changed the matchmaking system because they wanted to address the autofield issue. Someone, for example, who mains only top and jungle, then gets autofield in bot lane, losing that game should be less significant because it's not their main role that they are desiring to be ranked for. So they made separate elos and MMRs for each role. The idea and the concept was admirable, yet it didn't meet the expectations desired, and people abused the system, plus it received a lot of hate which made Riot revert the matchmaking system back to what it was before, which is the current one by the way. You can read more about it in depth if you want to, 
but I brought this up because I want to state that not all arguments against it were completely valid. For example, some players complain that why when losing on an autofilled roll, they would have to also lose a reduced amount of LP on the main roll as well. Well, two points. Yes, it's a different roll, but not a different game. You would still know how things work on a certain level at least. Sure, you don't know how the laning versus the matchup goes. But mid to late game, you'd have the general feeling and knowledge of team fighting with and against them that was acquired from your main role, which kinda makes sense. And second of all, to criticize something, whatever got replaced by it or is getting compared to it, must not suffer from the same criticism. Let me explain this part with an example. Let's say we have Patricia. Patricia dates Brad. Brad got some good things about him and bad things. Let's say one of the bad things about Brad, he has a drinking problem. Now, if Patricia breaks up with the first version of Brad and dates an identical version of Brad with one or two improvements, identical version just to make the comparison easy by the way, let's say he replies fast to messages and he's down to do one of her favorite hobbies together, yet he still has the same drinking problem. Patricia can't criticize the second version of Brad saying that he has a drinking problem because the old Brad also had the same problem. Coming back to what we were addressing before, people complained that still losing a reduced amount of LP on their main role when getting autofilled was not fair. Well, guess what buddy? The old matchmaking system, which is the current one, they don't care whether you got autofilled or not. Oh, you got autofilled? Ah, uh, cool, don't care, minus 25 LP. At least this one made you lose less. I brought this up because Riot wants to minimize and avoid any backlash that could be prevented. Because when I first suggested this ad up to my surroundings and asked them to criticize it, they said, oh, well, people, uh, people will complain that they still performed good compared to their team, yet the system didn't interfere to mitigate some LP from them. How is that fair? Especially if they see some other players getting blessed by the system, though it appears to them that they deserved it more than they did. Well, my answer to this was, sure, the system may not seem perfect, though it would realize on numbers and stats of each given game. And sure, it might seem inconsistent and nonsical to some players due to why, where, and when it should interfere to whether take actions or not. Which means, why add a system that is floppy and that doesn't even perform persistently? Cool, but a big fat jiggly butt. The current system doesn't even care whether you performed good when losing or not. Oh wow, you lost a game? Oh, you were doing good in it? Oh, minus 25 LP. Enjoy the loss. At least this one can kick in to save you some LP, regardless whether it would be consistent or not. The current matchmaking system doesn't even care. If you're gonna tell me, if I lose 5 games, which each I popped off in, and that system can bless me in just one of them, although it should bless me in all of them, it's still a win for me, simply because the current matchmaking system doesn't even care. Just scale things up in your head. Imagine an entire split full of ranked grinding. How many LP this system would have saved you? Because it's certainly zero LP for the current one, which kind of helps addressing the only criticism that I admit, which is those games that stat-wise, yes, you perform like trash, hot trash, but realistically, it wasn't the case. You may only die that many times because you were peeling for your carries, CC locking the enemy carries, then honorably dying afterwards, doing what must have been done, maybe some crucial sacrificial face checking for your team that was desperately needed, some risky split pushing to drag their attention and split their focus and the list goes on. If you lose the game, you probably won't get blessed by the system to get some LP back for your efforts, but that's the point of it. This system would be only here to interfere when it can, because the current matchmaker system doesn't give a damn. Oh, you lost? Cool, don't care. At least this one can kick in from time to time. Plus, Riot can still ask the team in the honoring phase which one they thought they should get blessed by the system. Which would be a niche add up by the way, just making sure that pre-made honoring won't count. Also, don't forget something very important. If players are in a game that seems doomed, let's say the enemy team is concerningly fed at an early stage of the game. We all been there, right? Instead of the usual FF and losing hope and trying to get out quickly, players would try their best to still perform relatively good in order to get blessed by the system. If someone doesn't care and just runs it down to end fast, plays carelessly, or opens their lane, they would lose the LP without mitigation. If the others think like, hey, sure this is lost, but I would like to lose minus 22 LP instead of minus 26 LP. Who knows, we might eventually grab some shutdowns and be a threat ourselves. Even if the game still can't be saved, they would at least save some more LP back. Who knows, maybe minus 20 LP instead of minus 26. Which means it would encourage players to keep trying and avoiding to forfeit. 
an issue that is also a huge problem in league. People quitting way earlier than they should. Not even bothering to try because it won't matter if they lost when performing good or not. But not anymore if this change gets wisely considered and hopefully eventually implemented. And last but not least, remember the example of earlier that performing good on won games and trash on lost games can pretty much barely move you in the ladder? Well, why people troll? To drag everyone else down with them, make them lose LP. With this small tweak, the only hostage they're gonna take is themselves. Sure, everyone will still lose LP if they lost the game, but which ones would lose more and which ones would lose less? Having a sick pathetic troller is an underwhelming experience to go through, but as long as others ignore them and focus on doing well, it would circumvent their malicious intent. Imagine trolling only to drag yourself lower than the others. Even if it wasn't trolling, even if it was just performing bad, well, they still deserve to be lower in the ladder than those who tend to consistently perform good on both won and lost games. My point is, those two 12 players that you get in your team a disturbing amount of times, they will have to pull their game up, otherwise they would keep belonging lower and lower. And those who lose while still managing to perform good, they would keep belonging slightly higher and higher compared to them. Which means you will eventually start to have them less often in your team. Which also means, if someone is worried about their inconsistent performance, desiring to get blessed by the system more often, hopefully it will encourage them to actually improve their overall skill in normals first before hitting ranked carelessly. Whether it's their temple, laning, positioning, whatever. <sighs> Been a while since I wanted to make this video and share this concept. See how altering just one small aspect can have huge, positive, game-changing impacts, even on players' mentality. I hope I covered everything. Remember, you can even think about something that this tweet could also positively impact that didn't cross my mind yet. So make sure to spit out what I couldn't perceive. And obviously, if you want to criticize, don't hold your thoughts and share them with us. We just want to make the game better and enjoyable for everyone that is currently playing that will be eventually introduced to the game and even for those who left it behind due to its state or whatever they couldn't support or tolerate anymore hoping they will come back on the rift once again hope you guys enjoyed keep it safe and see you guys in the next one oh no whoa 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 join the fucking discord bitch okay